What's going on guys? I've got an unboxing video today. Actually, it's gonna be a full vlog as well as the unboxing video, but I'm I'm in a car. <laughs> I'm in my rental car and I think I'm gonna start a new channel called Talking to People from Rental Cars because I'm always in rental cars, I'm always in different rental cars, and it's weird as a travel photographer because you never really have spaces that you can work. I don't have a studio, I don't have a house, and sometimes you just gotta make the most of what you've got. And the most of what I got right now is this rental car, but we're we're gonna do this, sitting in the car, unboxing a really, really cool product. You might remember a couple videos ago in the Philippines, I, I started having problems with my Mavic Pro. And you also might remember that I wasn't really that upset that I was having said problems with the Mavic Pro. And the reason I wasn't that upset is because of this. Mavic Air. When I saw the Mavic Air launch, I was so excited about it because in my head, the smaller I can get a drone, the more compact, the better it fits into my kit, the, the, the better. I got the Mavic Pro a little while ago, love the Mavic Pro, but why not go even smaller? And uh, the Mavic Air has been getting really, really good reviews. I'm really excited to test it out. I guess let's unbox it and then I'm gonna see if I can go try to fly it. It looks like some weather's coming in here in England, but um, hopefully I can get out and fly it and test this out. This unboxing video should be called Brendan Tries to Use a Knife, because apparently I'm bad at it. Um, I also need to give you guys a full disclaimer. I didn't pay for this drone. It's not even my drone. DJI contacted me about a month ago asking if I wanted to be a part of their tester pro program for some products. They sent me this to test and use. I have it on like a loaner basis for like three months. So I don't get to keep it. DJI is not paying me, but I'm always gonna be honest with you guys on where the products come from, who's paying for them. I'm not gonna be one of those guys that goes, hey, this is a really cool product and I'm not being paid to say that, but in some roundabout way they are being paid. I'm not being being paid at all by DJI. I just like testing cool stuff. So, um, here we go. I really wanted the flame red one. There's white, flame red, and onyx black. And uh, they told me I wasn't allowed to because the red one's been so popular. So I've got Arctic white in here. And this is apparently the most difficult box in the world to get into. Or I'm just not very smart. First thing I noticed, it has a case. I'm not sure if the Mavic Pro had a case. I don't think it did because I don't have one, but this is awesome. There's a case for it. This is the, the Mavic Air right in here. That's it. How awesome is that? Look at how small this thing is. Where's my phone? I have a Pixel 2 and not the full size, not the XL one, the regular one. Look at that. It's like slightly bigger. Obviously it's thicker, but the Pixel 2, versus the Mavic Air. That's incredible. I saw one of these, I saw a couple of these in the Philippines, but I didn't actually get my hands on it. And this is amazing. Look at how small this thing is. I'm guessing it pops out just like the Mavic. Maybe it doesn't, maybe I'm an idiot. Oh, there we go. Pop down, pop out, pop out, pop down. Take off the pieces of paper. I should have probably read those. I'm guessing, and I don't, I'm not just guessing, I kind of know. The gimbal's in here on the front, and so we pull that down and out, and there it is, the camera's right there in the front. Kind of protected, which is great, because usually with these drones, with the Mavic, with the Phantom, the gimbal's totally exposed, and when you hit things, it's the gimbal that takes the beating, and then you end up breaking your drone. <laughs> the gimbal's super susceptible. That's really nice, it just pops in like that. Now um, let's fold that back up. The one thing I notice is the props don't turn. Like the Mavic Pro props, they kind of twist in. These ones stick together, so they're they're kind of stuck, which I guess is okay. I don't really see that as a problem. Pack down. I'm gonna stick that away and see what else is in this box. Because it doesn't make sense to me at all why this box is so big, but the rest of the box is huge. So what else is in the Mavic Air box to make it so big and heavy? Oh, prop guards. So it comes with prop guards. I don't ever use prop guards. I might uh, might use them. I don't know. What else is in here? Extra props are in there. Instructions that I'll never read. <laughs> the controller, of course. The controller looks almost identical to the Mavic Pro. Well, no it doesn't actually. It looks 
Interesting. Uh, it's just cheaper. So on the, this is maybe a bit of a concern for me. On the Mavic Pro, you've got a screen on here that tells you the flight distance, the altitude, um, the direction, all this information's right there. So if for whatever reason your phone's not working or picking up the drone, you can always read it right there to know how high you are. So that's kind of, that. it's just missing it. It's not there. I do like that the sports mode's right in the middle there. That's nice. Um, also, the joysticks are now, wow, that's weird. There's no like sticky thing that sticks out. They're just, you just stick your thumb onto the inside like that. <laughs> Disclaimer from the future, I'm an idiot. I'll spend the rest of this video complaining about the fact that the controller doesn't have knobs. The knobs are there. You just have to attach them yourself. They're kind of like hidden away in here. <laughs> and yeah, I flew today with no knobs. I'm kind of a knob. It's light. I think it's it's as light as the other one. I think that's all that's in the box. Let's keep digging. Oh, there's something else. I'm guessing this is the charger. These are the cables. This is the charger. One thing I love that DJI does, and on their drone chargers on the Mavic Pro and now this one as well, on the charger, this is the big charger that goes into the wall. You, this charges the battery, you stick the battery in it. You've also got two USBs, so you can charge the battery and the controller and your phone or whatever else you want at the same time. I've actually been using these a lot, even when I'm not charging the drone, just to use the power as USBs. I think that's fantastic. So power, cables, because you can never have too many USB cables. And then these are the little things that go into the controller. So I don't want to lose those. And yeah, that's it. That's everything in the box. It's about uh, half an hour till sunset. So maybe I'll go try to fly this thing. Okay, I've got the Mavic out. It is windy, it's cold, and if there was ever a good time to test this thing, it's right now. Uh, the one thing that I'm hating about the Mavic Air is the thumb pads. I don't understand why they did this thing with the thumb pads to remove the little joystick bit, um, but the footage looks amazing. The footage looks really good. It looks really crisp. The light's really amazing right now, so everything looks fantastic. I just shot a droney, it looks smooth. Yeah, everything looks great. It's just that controller thing, it kind of bugs me. Um, but yeah, it flies well, it's heavy wind right now, it's even a little bit rainy, and everything seems to be fine. I think it's louder, or at least seems louder than my Mavic Pro. But yeah, I honestly don't see any dis difference in the footage from the screen. It's gonna be one of those things that I gotta wait until I get it home before I really know, I think. Ah, rain's coming. Flying the drone in the rain, the first time ever flying this and I'm flying it in the rain. Not smart. I had to stop that test way earlier than I wanted to just because it started raining and I don't want to push the Mavic Air too much But I have to say that I'm impressed because when I got the Mavic Air down it was wet So it held up to the rain pretty well and it's quite windy and I had no problems with the wind either But I do wish I could have tested it a little bit longer uh, than I than I did there The light here is crazy right now and of course I didn't bring my photography gear you got like blues and pinks that way over this way the other side you have have like this orange like almost a brown look it's really moody and would make for some phenomenal photos I think I'm here in Sherness actually on the Isle of Sheppey right on the beach and yeah that test I did of the Mavic Air was probably more significant than you realize because with the Mavic Pro having some issues I was kind of deciding do I want to take both drones to Japan or will the Mavic Air suffice I think the Mavic Air is gonna suffice I think it held up to the rigors I think the footage looks cool I think everything looks really positive other than the fact that the joysticks kind of suck and the other thing I noticed was that descending when I was dropping the Mavic Air was really slow which isn't 
great when the battery's low, and it just it can kind of waste time when the bat when the, when the drone drops really slowly. You seem to waste a lot of time. So those are like the two things I notice negative. From a positive standpoint, I think it felt faster. I think it felt like it was flying forward faster than the Mavic Pro and really smooth. And I'll be interested to see if the props got in the way of that footage. So yeah, I'm excited about the Mavic Air. A drone that fits in my pocket. Yeah, I'm not gonna complain about that. And I guess that's it for like the unboxing review sort of thing that I just did. And it's time to get to the airport because early morning, we got a trip to Japan. So I said I was gonna talk about Japan at the end of this video, but this video got way too long. So I think instead I'm gonna talk about Japan in Japan in a couple days when I get to the north of Japan um, and tell a little bit more of the story there. So I'll see you guys from Japan tomorrow. Peace.